Did you hear from Edmonds uh, about the Pivert Sambi problem? No, I, I first became aware of it through a paper by uh, Stephen Cook, a uh, former colleague at Berkeley who had moved to the uh, University of Toronto. It was in that paper that he gave a formal definition of the of NP, the class of problems for which a solution can easily be uh, verified. Um, one could argue that Jack Edmonds had this concept, but hadn't quite formalized it in the way that uh, theoretical computer scientists would expect. But Cook uh, did that, and then he did one additional amazing thing. He showed that a uh, particular problem in mathematical logic was as hard as any problem in the class NP in the sense that it had sufficient expressive power to enable any problem in NP to be described. And this is uh, what's called the satisfiability problem of uh, propositional logic. Um, <clears throat> you have um, variables that can assume the value true or false, and you have uh, a collection of conditions that those variables have to satisfy. Those conditions are called clauses. So a, a, a typical clause might be the condition that either A is true or B is false or C is true. And you're given a, a collection of these clauses involving a set of variables. And the question then is whether you can satisfy those clauses and what that means is that you can assign the value true or false to each of these variables so that every one of the conditions is, is satisfied. That's called the satisfiability problem of propositional logic. And Cook showed that that problem actually held the key to the question of whether p is equal to np because Given any other problem that lies in NP with a suitable description of the problem, you can write down any instance of such a problem. For example, the graph coloring problem. You can rewrite any instance of the graph coloring problem uh, as a set of clauses. The clauses would say uh, every vertex has to be either red or blue or green. It cannot be both red and blue, et cetera, et cetera. If you have two vertices that are adjacent to each other, they can't both be green. And in that way, you can write down a finite list of, of clauses that capture this particular instance of the graph coloring problem. And that essentially amounts to a reduction of the graph coloring problem to this problem in logic of deciding whether a set of logical clauses can be satisfied. Uh, Cook demonstrated that given any problem in the class NP, which is essentially the universe of typically occurring combinatorial problems, you can rewrite it in polynomial time as a problem of satisfiability. You can take any instance of it and in a uniform way rewrite it as an instance of the satisfiability problem. And what that means is that the satisfiability problem is in some sense the most general, the most universal, the most expressive problem in the class NP. And if you could have a polynomial time algorithm for solving that problem, in other words, if that problem is in the class P, then every problem in NP would be in the class P. So it is the least likely problem to be in P. So it's the least likely problem to be in P. If that problem fell, then every other, all of the problems, all of these diverse problems that arise in engineering and commerce and the natural sciences and uh, computer programming and so on, all of them would be solvable in polynomial time. Too much for anyone to believe, mm -hmm. but um, so so. What that means that is that we can focus on one particular problem if we wish, and that problem captures the question about the whole class, whether the whole class NP lies in, in P, is solvable efficiently. So um, this was a 
terrific achievement by uh, Stephen Cook. He was coming at it from the viewpoint of a logician. Um, but when I saw his paper, it evoked a sort of different line of thinking on my part because it occurred to me, uh, I felt convinced of it even from the start, that there were many specific problems that had the same universality, that it wasn't a peculiar characteristic of just this satisfiability problem of propositional logic, but that down-to-earth problems of uh, rooting, packing, uh, matching, um, scheduling, satisfying constraints, design of circuits, a host of problems from different areas of application would have also the same universality. So how does one prove something like that? The way you, you start from, the pro, from Cook's result, that the satisfiability problem has this universal quality, that everything in the class can be reduced to the satisfiability problem. Now, if we could show that the satisfiability problem, in turn, could be rewritten as a graph coloring problem, then the graph coloring problem would also be universal. And so, following that line of thought, I created a set of polynomial time reductions showing that something like 21 different problems from various domains, but problems that are well recognized as being central in different application areas, uh, also had the same universality property. And we call problems of this kind NP-complete problems. So I presented uh, a paper at a conference at IBM uh, in which I unveiled my list of uh, 21, uh, 21 problems. And it, it was perhaps the, the first occasion where the theory of computing directly had bearing on problems out there in the real world. It happened to be sort of the sweet spot, you might say, where the, the typical difficulty of optimization problems in the real world was captured by the class NP. Um, and so um, starting from my list of 21 problems, people in various fields ranging from physics to biology to different branches of engineering began constructing reductions, working from uh, the reductions that I had given and getting and developing more and more until thousands of problems eventually were shown to be NP-complete, to have this universal character. And what this means in practice is that um, when a problem is shown to be NP-complete, as most practical problems can be, um, it's incredibly unlikely that we will ever find a fast algorithm that succeeds in solving all instances of the problem. So it's a kind of impossibility result. Unfortunately, we have a strong belief that NP is not contained in P, but we don't know it for sure. This is still the, the, the P versus NP problem. But our ignorance has let us go a long way. But our ignorance has let us go a long way because we now know that all of these NP-complete problems are equivalent. Either all of them or none of them are solvable in polynomial time.